Now we're gonna talk about a norm. So I talked about inner products. And last quarter, we talked about metrics. Now we're gonna talk about norms. So a norm takes elements uh, x and v. Norm spits out a real number. Regardless if it's a complex vector field or any type of vector or uh, any type of field, it'll always spit out a real number. So first property, non-negativity. Norm of x is greater than or equal to zero. And norm of x equals zero if and only if x equals zero. First property of norm. Second property. For x comma y in v, norm of x plus norm from plus y is less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y. This is analogous to the to when we did metric spaces, the, the triangle inequality held. Metrics, metrics. But now we're dealing with norm and triangle inequality holds. Last property. For lambda in the field, an x in v, norm of lambda x equals absolute value of lambda times norm of x. So those are three properties of the norm. Also, we have a bunch of other properties. We have the parallelogram law. This guy's a big one. Well, we have Cauchy-Swartz. That is x inner product, the absolute value of the inner product of x dot y, or x comma y, is less than or equal to norm of x times norm of y. There are so many proofs of this, Cauchy Swartz. I recommend you read all of them. Also, parallelogram law. This guy's a little bit annoying, so I, I actually had to write out, but it has been very useful. In the proof of the closest point theorem, you need to use the parallelogram law. So that guy states, oh, where are you, parallelogram law? Okay. Norm of x plus y squared plus norm of x minus y squared is less is equal to 2 times norm of x squared plus 2 times norm of y squared. The proof of this is simple. All you do is compute this guy, compute this guy, and just sum up. Very simple proof. Now we're going to talk about Hilbert spaces. So, Hilbert space. Remember, Back in the old day, we talked about metric spaces are complete if every Cauchy sequence converges. Now, in a Hilbert space, it's a space that has an inner product of a Hilbert space. It is a complete. Uh, inner product space that means the norm is the metric induced by the inner product is it's complete with that metric so in other words it's complete and definition of a no, of a metric induced by that uh, inner product is with respect to d x comma y equals the square root. Okay, should be. First, we're gonna induce. We're gonna define norm of x minus y. We're gonna first the inner product will induce a norm, and then the norm will induce a metric. So this guy is actually equal to square root x minus y comma x minus y. So the square root of the inner product between x minus y 
and x minus y. It's complete with respect to this metric. Now very similar is a Banach space. A Banach space is let's see is a complete norm space. This means it is complete with respect to the metric induced by the norm. So being induced by the norm, like before, meant d of x comma y equals norm of x minus y. Very good. So that's a Banach space. Okay, any what else is there to talk about? So Banach space, Hilbert space. Okay. Oh, right. So we talked about norms. We can have many different types of norms. There's the taxicab norm. There's the standard Euclidean norm. There's the supremum norm. But one big theorem, very important. Any two norms on a finite dimensional space are equivalent. Any two norms, norms not, come on, norm one are equivalent. on a finite dimensional space. Oh, a finite dimensional space, as you remember from algebra, means that the space can be written as a linear combination, the entire space, as the span of a finite number of elements in that space. So for example, Rn can be written as the span of the n standard basis of n, n uh, elementary basis, uh, n elementary uh, standard basis, ba base, basis elements. So, um, then there's infinite dimensional spaces, meaning that it cannot be written as a finite uh, span. So, for proofs with that, you assume that there is a finite span, and then find something outside the set. Contradiction. So that is fun. So any two norms are equivalent, and when I say equivalent, that means there exists c1 comma c2 are greater than zero, such that uh, some people also say c1 and c1 inverse. But the thing is, I don't like that. I mean, who cares? Okay, let me let me finish my argument. But people, there's two definitions. There's an equivalent definition for equivalent. But I, I prefer this one. It means this two constants such that c1 times norm of x1 less than or equal to norm of, with respect to x2, x0. And that's less than or equal to norm with respect to x1, c2. So, if you've taken regular real analysis classes, you probably showed some sort of equivalence, uh, some sort of relationship like this between the supremum metric, the absolute value, and also with the Euclidean norm. That is the standard example. Uh, that all three are equivalent. And as we, as this theorem, as we prove, says, all norms on a finite dimension, finite dimensional is key are equivalent. Anyway, I'm going to pause it for a second.